So I need to start thinking about the clock circuit. And I think I need to have the clock circuit designed before I release the um, microcode state machine. I think they kind of go hand in hand. I need to be able to run, stop, single step, uh, generate the right timing signals and things like that. Um, so it reminded me that I had started this several months ago. Um, I kind of uh, had a separate project and um, I had a goal in mind to learn how to program uh, a GAL devices uh, which are no longer made but you can still find them used. This is a GAL 22V10 uh, which I believe sends for 22 inputs and 10 outputs. I think that's right. Um, anyway, it's a combination of logic chip. And uh, this is a lattice chip. Um, I, I was playing around with it when I first decided I wanted to learn how to program those. And I just decided to build a clock generator. And uh, it's running here. Um, you can kind of ignore these bits right here and just take a look at those two flashing, flashing blue LEDs there. And it's just toggling back and forth, toggling back and forth. It's run off of a, uh, a little 555 circuit here. You can get these off of eBay. It's just a 555 and some jumpers that allow you to pick ranges and a couple pots that allow you to change the duty cycle and the um, uh, frequency. So let's take a look at what these signals are doing, though, these two, uh, these two flashing signals. They're not exactly what you think they are. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll hook up... Um, uh, let me zoom back out here. Um, uh, we'll hook up my uh, uh, oops, sorry, uh, my little logic analyzer, and I'll show you the screen capture for that, and, and uh, show you what these uh, what these pins are doing. All right, we're taking a look at a program called Couple C U P L, and this is Win Couple. WinCouple is a program you can have a free download from Atmel and allows you to program uh, PAL and GAL type devices and uh, probably fancier ones too. Um, so this is a two-phase clock generator that uh, uh, that I've described here. It's for the 22V10 GAL part. And you first start out by describing the input pins and the output pins. All right, so we're going to have one input pin, pin one. That is going to be our clock. So that comes from the 555. So that's just a square wave coming in. And then we're going to have a bunch of pins that are the outputs. We're going to have Q0, Q1, and Q2. And then we're going to have P0 and P1, which are our phase zero clock and our phase one clock. So the P0, pin 18, and, and, and P1, pin 19, those are the things we were looking at on the um, Spectrum, I mean, not spectrum, the uh, logic analyzer. And um, the last pin is kind of an odd pin. Uh, it's a virtual ground pin. So I'm, I'm using my um, indicators and I need a ground pin somehow. So it's, uh, the easiest way to find a ground pin is just to create your own. <laughs> and so I've just taken pin 20 and grounded it. And I'm, I'm using the sync capability of, of the chip itself to, to, to create enough ground to, uh, to power the LEDs. So our virtual ground then is going to be uh, defined as just zero. So this means binary zero, uh, the, the quotation B. So it's just binary zero. So, so V ground will always be low. Pin 20 will always be low. It's going to be a virtual ground. All right. All right. Now we're going to have a phase zero clock and a phase one clock. And those are going to be defined out of the Q zeros, ones, and twos. So let's figure out what the Q zeros, ones, and twos are first before we go figure out what P1 and P0 are. So Q0, Q1, Q2, those are just a three bit counter. All right. So the uh, least significant bit is uh, Q0, most significant is Q1. Uh, defining a counter using logic equations looks a bit odd, but this is how you do it. Um, the Q0 uh, is going to be, in fact, if you see here, it's I probably should write it like this. 
might be a little better. So the Q0, uh, we're going to be using flip-flops. So inside of the 22V10 are flip-flops. And we can use those flip-flops um, for the counting. So we're going to build a synchronous counter out of our D flip-flops. And so since they are D flip-flops, they have a D input. And we're going to say that the Q0 D input is going to be not Q0, which is its output. So if you've ever made a toggling um, flip-flop out of a D gate, a D flip-flop, you tie not Q to the D input. So that's what this is doing. It's tying not Q to the D input. All right. The next D input is going to be Q1 or Q0. I think that's what that means. I think it's an or. It's an or or an and. Uh, maybe it's an and. Oh, no, this is and. Uh, and this must be or. It's kind of weird. Anyway, so dollar sign is or. or uh, yeah, dollar sign is or. So uh, if Q1 or Q0, then you run those into the um, Q1D, and the Q2D is a bit more of them. And you can look that up online. Uh, it was kind of weird. I, I didn't quite understand it at first either. I just copied and pasted it from somebody else's code, and I went, oh, OK. Oh, I guess, I guess that works. It's just weird to think about that way. But all it does is it creates a 3-bit counter. And I run those to three LEDs, so we can we can actually watch those two. Um, we'll, we'll go back to the uh, uh, logic analyzer and I'll watch that three-bit counter. All right, we're going to need reset. Make sure the thing clears to zero. So we're going to um, um, reset this thing uh, on a power-up reset. That's what these bottom things do. Q zero A R. At Q1 AR Q2. So this is the flip-flops reset pins. We're going to say those are going to reset um, all at the same time. And we're going to have them reset on a particular condition. We're going to have them reset when Q2 and Q1 both go high, which is on count of six. So we're going to build a three-bit counter, and we're going to only have it count to six, and then it's going to reset. So I think it's only going to count to five. I think when it's six, it resets. So it'll count um, up to five and then reset. All right. Then we go back to P0 and P1. We find some really strange equations. And those come out of doing the logic truth tables for uh, uh, what I want to have happen. Um, and I'll see if I can recreate those. I think I threw those away, but um, if I can recreate those, um, P0 is going to be uh, not Q2 and not Q1. And then the other one is, um, maybe this is an exclusive or, yeah, maybe dollar signs an exclusive or. Sorry, I forget how that cell works. Um, but P1 is going to be this thing, which is Q1 and Q0. Uh, it's either an OR, an exclusive OR, uh, Q2, and not Q0. All right, so it's very complicated, right? So this is kind of weird, um, but it does do what I want it to do. All right, so let's go back and look at the uh, logic analyzer. Just ignore it. <laughs> so the top um, signal is P0, P1. And now we can look at these three channels down here, which is our three-bit counter. All right, so let's take a look at the three-bit counter. So we're going to find when they're all low, and here they're all low, right? Low, 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 and then one zero zero. So zero 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 one zero 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 one zero one one zero 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 one one zero one. That's five. And then boom, zero, zero, zero. So it resets. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then resets. So it counts from zero to five and then resets. And then from these signals, I'm able to develop these, these two non-overlapping clocks. So this kind of gives you an idea why we saw on the M side, we had um, one megahertz clocks and, and, and 
two megahertz clocks, like uh, there's a two megahertz clock, but what's the crystal being used? The crystal was an 18 megahertz crystal. Why is the crystal so darn fast if you're only going to use two megahertz? And that's because these um, clock generation chips need to have logic like this to generate strange waveforms. So they clock at a much faster value, but then the clock that actually ends up being used is much slower. Right. So let me see if I can find the state, machine, state diagram for the non-overlapping clocks and show you that. 